As a designer, the tools that we use every single day are critical to our workflow. Having terrible tools makes us worse designers. It makes it slower and less productive, but having great tools make us faster designers and be able to be more productive. In this video, we're gonna go over four of the absolute best tools that you can use to become a more productive designer. Let's get into it. So the first tool here is specifically for freelance designers or freelancers in general. So this tool here is brand new. It's a pricing tool that helps you understand what you can be charging and what general prices should be for a certain service. Let's get into it. So Instant Price is a service that allows you to understand what you should be charging your clients. On the left side here, we have a ton of different services and we can even search by different services or different projects we'll get into. And then on the right side, we have our grand total or almost like a, a little calculator and we can find to them later. So on the left side here, I'm going to type in web design so we can see something more fine tuned for us. And we can see that there's a few different types. So there's web design for 15K, there's website redesign for 23, there is web design personalization. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different types of web designs and web SEO and any type of service you can offer. So I'm going to go ahead and add all here. And what we can see on the left side here is that it kind of reminds us of upsells that we should be giving our client, upsells that we can be selling and can be making more money. So on one side, it allows us to understand what a general range should be for a web design. And on another hand, it allows us to remember, okay, I can be charging for an audit for their competitors. I can be charging for wireframes, for example, or for design concepts or for branding materials. You know, all of that, I can be charging for it and I'm gonna actually charge for it now because I remembered thanks to Instaprice. So one of the things that we can do here to find tune this project, this 15K for our personal client and for us, for our experience, is we can click on fine tune here and we can base it off of different complexity, different client size, deadline, project of interest, experience level, and maybe also if you have a fixed daily rate. So for complexity, I'm going to say high, client size low, deadline needs to be urgent. And we can see that on the right side here, our prices start to develop. It starts to change, to increase, to decrease, depending on the duration of the project, depending on the interest that we have have in the project, if it's exciting, if it's boring, if I'm a beginner, if I'm world class, it, it just, it depends, you know? So then once we have our final budget here, we can go ahead and share the quote with our client or we can download a PDF, which we can see right here. And we can see that this is almost like a proposal that we can send directly to the client. So we have a list of the different prices here. We have the deliverable, the price, the subtotal tax rate, if we can add one, which is over here in the settings. So we can just add a very simple tax rate or different currencies. And this is just a great service for beginner freelancers who don't really understand what they should be charging. This is great. This is gonna save a ton of people with back and forths. One thing I've always struggled with as a freelance designer is native Mac apps that help me directly as a designer. I mean, for example, have you ever actually used the font book for anything other than installing typefaces on your computer? Probably not. I know that I personally haven't. I usually, my workflow is I install something and then I take it to Figma or Photoshop or anywhere that I'm working and I kind of play around with it there. Well, something like Typeface is a great app for that. Typeface is similar to font book. It allows us to see all of the fonts that you have on your computer computer, you can filter it by different sizes, by different weights, by different classes. And one of the best things is the actual comparison tool. So let's get into it. So I have a couple of fonts here that I just use on the daily. This is all of my fonts. I have around a thousand fonts here, but we can just click on this one right here and we can see exactly what I'm talking about. So we can see that we can filter it by different characters, by different text. So we can imagine what it would look like as a paragraph with two columns, with a title with an introduction and then two columns, an introduction or a quote, and then a custom layout as well. So if I wanted to as well, we can then change this text to be something like subscribe to the channel or something like that. And then alongside of that, we can also play around with positioning. We can play around with different aspects of the font. We can see where the different measurements are. We can see how the actual outline is of the font in case we need that. We can see the underline and also all the aspects that we need to look at in terms of fonts. We also have this toggle here where we can filter by lowercase, by uppercase. We can filter by accented or not. We can see just a different dynamic. We can see font names. We can see numbers. We can see punctuation. Pretty much anything we want is available on this application. And one of the benefits that I like as well is we can actually compare it to anything else we want. So if I wanted to, we can go back here into all and we can see that we can compare our original Bangala Sangam font to all of the different versions. So we can see that we can compare it to all 
all the different fonts on my computer. And that includes fonts that have nothing to do with it. But again, we're comparing it depending on the punctuation that we just set on, or we can compare it by letters, by accents, anything that we want, we can compare it, which is amazing when you're creating a project and you want to actually see what kind of fonts you can play around with. What do you have on your computer that you can actually use? Now we can also filter by sans. I'm going to get rid of this comparison here. We can filter by sans typefaces, by script, by serif by symbolic so we can actually understand what type of fonts we have on our on our computer that we can then use now one way to not see absolutely all of the fonts that you have on your computer is to then just group by family and we can see that okay here we have the Arial, here's Arial black here's avenir so we don't have 30 different types of aerials or 20 different types of avenirs we can see all of them at the same time and we can actually compare it with all the different fonts that we need to now to drive the point home at how useful this application is let's go here into the typing preview and let's type in something like hello and we can see exactly what I'm talking about. All of our fonts are available to us right here. There's only sans, only 500, but we can see that there's all the different ones. If I wanted to go ahead and increase the size, we can do that as well. We can see our latest imports, our system. And also another thing that you can do is that you can use the search filter here and you can filter by different weights, by different aspects of fonts, by numbers, by percentages, by equations, by ligatures as well. And so as you can see, if we click here on Baloo, we can see that this is a very great font. We have all the different aspects of this font here. And so I can't recommend this enough if you use fonts on the daily for your projects. So whenever I'm building and designing something on Figma or Webflow or whatever it is, I always try to see real examples online. And I always try to see what measurements people have used for their own designs so that I can understand the scale, the width, the, the, the distance of something. And there isn't really a tool to do that. And what I would always do is use the shortcut tool and just try to understand maybe the size of this button right here and I would see that okay maybe it's 145 146 pixels wide but another tool that we can use for that is called pixel snap so we can use the shortcut or click on the toolbar here and we can measure absolutely anything on my screen it doesn't have to be inside of chrome it doesn't have to be inside of anything it can work on any application and so this here we can go back to our example here and we can see that this is actually if I can click it here, this is 147 pixels wide. So that's great. We can also save our measurement clicking on H and then we can also maybe click another measurement here for V and we can see that this is 117 pixels in height and do the same thing here and do the same thing here. And so you can see that you can actually have a pretty good time understanding what all these different measurements are and really understanding the benefits of distances and sizes and padding and margin on websites and all over applications as well. This is great for applications that don't necessarily use Chrome, that they're not necessarily web-based because you can just understand the measurements of anything. If I wanted to go into Spotify and understand the width of that, then I could, you know, so this is a great, great tool to have. Now, an issue I used to have all the time when I was starting out as a designer was that I would always struggle to understand what the hex code or the RGB code was for anything that was was outside of my browser. So I used to talk about Colorzilla all the time where you can essentially pick the color of anything on your browser, anything inside of Chrome is fair game. But as soon as you go outside of that and you try to see the color of maybe your desktop, maybe the color of the, of the three buttons up here, you can't necessarily do that. But anything inside the browser, you can. So that was until I found SIP or SIP. So SIP allows us to essentially have a color picker on anywhere inside of our desktop or anywhere inside of the screen. And we can then pick the color of, for example, my background here, we can go ahead and click that. And we essentially now have it inside of Figma. So we can then copy and paste that and we can then create anything we want within that color. So this is a great tool for us to be able to create color palettes, a great tool for us to be able to understand what colors are of anything outside of Chrome, anything, for example, even the color palette of Figma itself. What is this blue? So we now know that this blue is this color. So we can see the color of absolutely anything, any software, any tool, we can see what the color codes are. Setapp is a partner of today's video. It really helps you just cut down on all the subscription costs that you might have as a designer. You can get all the last three tools that I talked about and 240 more tools for only $10 a month. If you want to try it out for free for seven days, the link is in the description. If you learned something from this video, then do let me know down below, leave a like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.